This is Lance Breitstein, a prop trader that made over eight figure, but also made over $21 million in just one single year. In this video, you're going to listen to eight minutes of the one lens B and his best trading concept. So before getting the video, a quick reminder that all the best tools will be linked in the description. Let's get right in. The biggest question for me was, I don't care about the entry salary. I don't care about the 26 K. What is the probability of success? How many people do succeed? And of those, what is that spectrum success look like? So then I knew like, look, you're gonna eat shit for a couple of years, but if you happen to be one of the successful ones, the sky's the limit. It's so important for people to recognize that, at least for me, I never look at any trade in a vacuum. I am always looking at it long-term. I'm always looking at it on a three month chart and I'm always looking at it intraday. The intraday chart is of course the most important because I am at the end of the day an intraday trader. So the intraday chart is probably, I would guess, depending on, on the trade, maybe close to 70% of the decision power. Maybe the uh, three month chart is, is 25%, then maybe like a, that last 5% for the big picture uh, multi-year. Is that's also the power of being with the trend is sometimes the trend really, really surprises you. Not even sometimes, I would say more often than not, the trend can really have a lot more power than you would imagine, especially in kind of this euphoric speculative market. Why do I think this was like such an in-play special stock? For starters, the volume, for starters, the news catalyst, and for starters, how much it went up on that first day. And I would say is when you have good traders in a pod and everybody tends to really be having that see up moment, that's when you can really, really push and size it. So many people are like debating, oh my God, is this just gonna be the fake out for the later breakout? And it's like, I don't need to make that decision. And like, people are asking me like, oh my God, what's your, what's your plan for the breakout? How are you positioning for the breakout? And it's like, I don't need to make that decision. I can see how this set that's up against the breakout. Like why wed yourself psychologically to a outcome before you have all the information? It's like asking in poker, hey man, how many chips do you think you're gonna end up putting in this hand? It's like, how the hell can I know that? I don't know all the cards on the table. I don't know how everyone's betting. And, and whatever answer I give you is gonna change as I get more information, right? But the thing that people need to realize is like in trading, people should have the ability to change on the dime without ridicule as the information changes because this stuff is dynamic. Science is dynamic. Politics are dynamic. We can say, look, I'm short biased and then boom, that can change. And then we can be neutral or long biased. The best trades are the ones where they break the level and they're gone forever. So if you're only buying the ones that then come back to the level, you're self-selecting for the ones that are showing weakness. I think one of the major issues I see on FinTwit world is like most people, their reviews are just so vague and there's just so many nuances you need to factor of criteria you need to be applying to even just stand a chance at edge. With these write-ups, I really think it's great to have a template. And the beauty of having a template is it allows you to be more diligent and thorough to make sure you're not missing any category. Once you start to have a template, it kind of makes it faster and less thinking involved to go through this, but then it also helps you make sure you're not forgetting anything. One of the biggest blind spots of retail traders is that they do not have any clue about news. News is one of the most important variables there is to a stock trader. In pure binary terms, news is what moves a stock price fundamentally, right? If we look at earnings reports or M&A news or all this sorts of stuff, the biggest variable there is, is is there fresh news on this stock? Why is this important? Because if there's fresh news on a stock, I'm generally trying to go with the trend on that. I'm almost never looking for mean reversion. But if you have no clue about news as a variable and you don't even look to see if there's news, Think about how different your trading is. You're probably trying to fade spikes and overextended stuff that's actually not overextended because it's on fresh news. The other thing that's ludicrous to me is if you're trying to backtest a setup, the biggest variable there probably is for many of these setups is fresh news or not. Just a quick reminder that all the best tools for day trading and investing are linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get back to the video. So risk management actually was one of my biggest weaknesses, which is surprising to a lot of people that I could have had such a strong career. I mean, the only reason I had a career was because I was doing stuff with a lot of edge so I could get away with some of these big losses. That doesn't mean it was fun. Part of the issue with big rips is it's just they spur such a negative feedback loop. And a lot of those big rips came when I didn't have a stop. So the first thing I did was I removed any type of trading where I didn't have a stop. And like 
Look, there can always be flukes where a stock gets halted or a stock has fluke news on you. Like there's there's nothing that can ever take that that black swan risk away. What I like to say to try to systemize and start to really quantify some of this capitulation is I like to really see the price go 2x or more. If it goes 3x, 4x, 5x, that's even better the size of the prior day's move. The other thing is I love as a general rule of thumb to see 2x the volume capitulation as the prior days, right? We can also talk about not only did it cover a lot of price, but it accelerated, right? Like the first bar maybe moves five cents, then five cents, then maybe 10 cents, then maybe 12 cents, and then boom, a whopping 40 cents. So we accelerated, we did almost 4X the prior day, but then it's not just price that capitulated. I think one of the most important and overlooked things by many people is volume. So what I really, really look for in a capitulation is price to be capitulating as well as volume. And look, I don't think I'm Rain Man. I don't think I'm Elon Musk or anything, but I thought I was like sharp enough. And more than anything, I just knew that nobody was going to have more grit or work harder than me or care more. And that was in my control. And I knew that the whole premise was like with without being Rain Man, without being some computer science with you can just through your own soft skills and grit really persevere and come from nothing to massive, massive success. How do you kind of really choose those risk amounts? Like if you know a setup is great or whatnot, and my answer was you want to risk towards what would be an optimal amount, but you never want to risk so much that if some trades go wrong or a couple trades go wrong, that it becomes demotivating or anywhere near the amount that can take you out of the game. And right. so that's kind of how you roughly find how to do that. A lot of people get faked out all the time because they're not using real levels and they're falling for noise, right? If you have a real level, that level should get an emotional reaction. Like I want every trader that I can get ideally all just buying that level and all of this volume coming in. I want hedge funds, institutions, banks, you know, retail traders, everyone just buying that because it's just so one-sided. And so like what a lot of people will do is they'll take something that's probably totally noise. A true level is super, super clear. Like if, if Ideally, I can show any any trader, any technical analysis background, and they're gonna say, oh wow, like that's a real level. I remember sitting on the desk next to my trainer, and I remember there would be days where, some really big days, or he'd make a couple hundred grand, or then even normal days where he would just make 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand. I would just say, like Lance, like if you can, if you can even just do, you know, a tenth of what this guy does, you need to figure this out. Like, News can change anything. Like the world is just so dynamic. Macro news can change this. CPI can change this. Company specific news. What if Facebook or some of the mega caps say, oh my God, we're cutting CapEx. Like anything can change my views within two seconds. Um, so they're only valuable in, in the moment. Mine is just for learning purposes, which is why I do this, right? And that's also why I don't do any of the live stuff because there's just no way to learn. Like, you know, anybody that's ever wanted live stuff, it's like, dude, you're just trying to piggyback me. You're not trying to put in the work and learn the concepts, which I'm just freely putting out there.